Good morning, uh, workshop. Good morning and welcome to SLU and this third in a series of Global Challenges University Alliance workshop, a somewhat cumbersome name. My name is Johan Schneider. I'm by profession a professor in microbiology, so I know in food-related microbiology, so I have some connection perhaps with invasive species, but not much. My role here today is that one of Pro Vice Chancellor or Vice Rector with responsible for external research collaboration and also the pers person that has initiated this initiative at SLU. We are very pleased to have a number of foreign guests and also to have some internal guests. As being a distributed university, we sometimes do not meet as much as we would like, so this is also an opportunity internally, but uh, mainly externally, of course, to meet all of you who have come from different countries. I will uh, start by defining or explaining a little bit about SLU and then defining the concept of this series of workshops which aims towards the development of a Global Challenges University Alliance. We have a first uh, closed session, semi-closed, Op an opening and explain, explanation of some aspects of, of the uh, workshop. And then there will be three keynote speakers which will be open to people here at this campus and you will also be filmed and you will be famous and broadcast. Uh, the cameraman requires those speakers to have headsets and they asked me about people would worry about their coiffure, about their hairdo, and I said most people would probably not, judging from myself and a few others. So the keynote lectures, they will be chaired by Åke Lindelöv, who is sitting here, and they will keep you, he is a very strict person, so will keep you, keep you to your time, but you have a reasonable amount of time to expand on your favorite topics. This university has as its mission to develop the understanding of biological natural resources. We would share that with many universities, with many general universities, but we also have as our mission given by the board and the government to develop the understanding of the sustainable use and management of natural resources. That's the extra add-on. We do that by research and education, of course, but also by environmental monitoring and assessment. And that's quite a unique task for a Swedish university and maybe worldwide as well. And we particularly stress that we do that in collaboration with the surrounding community or society at large. So we tend to think of ourselves as serving science and society <coughs> in a broad sense. We work with plants, with animals, with microorganisms, and, and all the way from molecule to landscape or even cityscape. We are a distributed university. We are found on more than 35 places in Sweden. We have main campuses in Alnarp down south, Skara more to the west, central west, in Uppsala in east and Umeå up north. We have recently acquired in a friendly takeover, I hope, the, uh, from the Board of uh, Fisheries, we have uh, acquired what has now become the Department of Aquatic Resources. So we have facilities both on the West Coast and East Coast and in the, the big lakes in Sweden. And this is a fantastic uh, addition to, to SLU as such. We brag about it all the time. The main location is here in Uppsala. The majority of people are here. The majority of the administration leadership is also here. So science-wise, it's more even distribution, perhaps, that can be indicated by these two-thirds. We are quite a unique university within the Swedish uh, university system, as two-thirds of our budgets are allocated to research and uh, PhD student education, we tend to lump these together. It's only the Karolinska Institute that have comparable numbers in Sweden. Probably the percentage of environmental monitoring and assessment should be higher, slightly higher, maybe 12%, 14%, I don't know, Joran? Something like that. 
And we have a compar uh, comparatively small uh, budget for undergraduate education, so about 20%. And we would certainly welcome more students. But we have spe very specialized educations for agronomists, uh, forest managers, veterinary uh, sciences, it's landscape architecture, etc. So we specialized and rather costly educations. We also do environmental and energy sciences for the civil engineers of the University of Uppsala. We have uh, full-time students, about 4,000, but 8,000 students pass through the university every year. 700 PhD students and about 240 professors. And the total staff, a little bit more than 3,000. You might have noticed some building uh, equipment and a bit of disturbance on the campus. We are building a completely new campus. We have invested, or rather, rather the, the organization that owns the houses has invested about three billion Swedish crowns in new facilities on this campus. There are other things at the other campuses, but this is the, the largest investment. Most of the houses are the, here previously were built in the 70s with flat roofs, which was the fancy of the architects at that time, not very practical in a, in a moist and snowy climate. So we have lots of problems with them. Now we are concentrating and we have built a house for the life sciences, for the environmental sciences, animal science, veterinary sciences, with, an, with the only university hospital for animals in Sweden. And we are building a new house for man administration management and for those sciences that do not require laboratories. Outside Uppsala, we have made another investment in a facility for research related to f farm animals, which may include aquaculture in the future, but presently it's cows and pigs and poultry. It's also supposed to be a sustainability showcase in, in farming with completely self-sufficient compl on, on energy using uh, wood chips and biogas taking care of the manure from the animals. We are only, maybe slightly bizarrely, the only university in Sweden which is a part-time, part-owner of a slaughterhouse. And that sound, may sound strange, but that's because to secure the training of the vet students, they, they need to have that training. Uh, SLU has organized four larger research programs where one called Future Forest was the first one. And this one is, acts as a platform for uh, research initiatives in forest system and specialized in the interaction between natural sciences and social sciences, economics, on the different trades off you have to do within the forest system. We, we <coughs> do research for the sustainable use and management, and you have conflicts of interest in many aspects in the forest between tourism and recreation and the use of timber, but also the use of the woody biomass itself. We have another pro fut futuristic program on agriculture, dealing with various uh, aspects of food supply and land use. A third one called FUSE, Future Urban Sustainable Environments, mostly focused on, on the competence of our landscape architects on compact and green and livable cities. Today, 50% of the world's population live in cities. Very soon, it will be 75%. So we need to think and understand how this can be organized in the best way. The fourth and final of these future programs called Animal Health and Welfare, which deal with lifestyle-related diseases of companion animals. I think that they want, want this one to illustrate perhaps obesity and stress. If I was the cat, I would be somewhat stressed and not quite trust the training of these German dogs. But the, the reason we are, here, we are gathered here today is, of course, the major global challenges. We have a growing population number of billion of people who would like to eat as well as we do in uh, 2050, which will require more land or more efficient use of the land, preferably. will require more energy, more pesticides, more fertilizer, etc. And we have a climate change 
I think there are very few people that deny that there is a climate change taking place, and this will put further stress on this on the natural ecosystem and on the agricultural and the production forest ecosystems. So if you are a university, you tend to believe or maybe delude yourself that education and research can do something for society at large. We still tend to think this, don't we? And uh, if these are global issues, the, the thing to do would be, of course, to organize yourself globally. Uh, sometimes globally is meant, uh, is used in the term of a development work between north and south. Sometimes internationally is meant work between the European Union and the United States, but we must take a much broader view of global activities. So what we have proposed and hopefully have started to develop is the Global Challenges University Alliance, where we would like to propose that we identify four or five of the leading universities per continent to start a strategic cooperation. And we would aim for a cultural as well as climate zone diversity and for universities of the highest quality. We have specific program within Sweden at, uh, and at SLU connecting with African universities. We have foreign ministry and, and different aid organizations support for this. And they assist in connecting with the African universities. We like to develop this in steps by organizing these kinds of thematic workshops with six to 12 participating universities. And as a follow up, organize global challenges summer schools for PhD students or advanced master's science students. We had the first one on biofuels and biorefineries in September. I'm glad to see that some universities have been very consistent. Cornell and Tokyo have been with us and Pretoria has come back. We had a, a larger workshop in May on the future of food bringing together aspects of food security, food safety, and food qual quality. Scientists in this field normally go to three different conferences. Now we have the environmental monitoring of invasive species. In March, we plan for the livable city or the green city, aspects of urbanization, peri-urbanization. In June, aquaculture, probably a forest-oriented one next autumn, and possibly something on one health. That is the interaction between human and animal health and disease, zoonotic diseases, antibiotic resistance, etc. So the, we, the first one had a reasonably good spread around the globe, indicated by the arrows, and maybe on the composition of the participants, you can see not all of them are completely Swedish. There is a, a nice mix. We had a real, really good balance. The future of food was even more distributed around the globe. We now had Shulang Gongkorn joining us for the first time and they're coming back for the second time, so I hope they will enjoy also this workshop. These are some of the people from that workshop. I hope and think, Sara, that we have booked a photographer. Today after lunch, you will have your chance to chime. So th this is the present situation. Very happy to see you all here. The idea with this, these works is, of course, that we should have the general scientific knowledge sharing. Then that's, that's almost taken for granted. Uh, it should give you a chance to meet uh, new colleagues. Some of you have met old colleagues, make new friends, and to start to create an additional Global Challenges Network. We would like very much this workshop to result in an opinion paper, position papers, and uh, uh, Lars Edenius and Anna Hopkins will in introduce you to this work. And we would also very much see whether there would be an interest in organizing Global Ch Challenges University Alliance Summer School for graduate students. The first workshop on biofuels, they will organize something in November, uh, and the future of food, workshop will have something in the autumn of 2014. And I will leave it to this group to decide whether you would like to organize that 
and then I will support financially, of course, if this will take place. And we have also seen at the other workshops that this could be a good, good possibility to uh, identify possibilities for, for global funding for joint grant applications and to discuss that among yourselves. So in the end, and please note that the errors are only indicative of areas and region, we hope to have 25 of the leading land use research universities connected in a global challenges university alliance, which aims to do research and educate the future leaders of a sustainable bioeconomy. A warm welcome to Uppsala. I hope you enjoy your stay. I'm cert certainly looking forward to this workshop. And now I hand over to my colleague, who is the Pro Vice Chancellor for Environmental Monitoring, Joran Stål, who will describe that concept within SLU. Thank you. <laughs>